to get your sweep angle is instead of making a way and cutting it off is to start from scratch by making a base cut which will establish your sweep angle just for making one cut and then you can make all the rest of the cuts off of that. This would be a mirror image of the instead of cutting off the piece of wing we're going to cut off this triangle from just the simple pre-taped foam board. I've chosen to use two, a two-tone wing with seven inches taped on the bottom color and nine inches taped on the top color here and that will give you a nice different color between the lower and the upper surface of your wing and the transition will generally fall within a quarter inch of your uh, leading edge itself. So the spar will transition the wing right about here about an inch and a half forward of the joint of the trailing edge of the wing. This is an upper surface of the wing, this is the lower surface of the wing. This needs to be folded over and in fact I recommend that you go ahead and refer to my arm and wing construction video. Remove the paper where you need to, make the scores and the bevels where you need to so that when you fold this over you'll be able to more precisely locate your spar for the optimal position. So here's an illustration of that from the bottom. You don't actually need to draw these lines but it will help you conceptualize it. So it's three inches from the midline on the left wing, three inches from the midline on the right wing. This is of course turned upside down, you're viewing it from the bottom. Here's the upper surface of the wing. Now because the bend for the leading edge of the wing doesn't actually occur right on this line but a little bit beyond it, as you can see here in this one I've pre-bent, this would be the seven inch mark. The actual bend occurs about a half an inch past that. That's why I recommend extending this line up about a half an inch past your transition line so that when you make the score in the paper on the inside of the wing at this point the bend will actually occur about half an inch past that and that will give you a nice transition. Note that unlike the other Synapse wing technique which removes a 4 inch wedge over a 9 inch cord this removes a 3 inch wedge over a slightly over 7 inch point. So when cut out it would look like this. These two parts are taken out and the lower surface of the wing comes together to 135 degrees. Now it's time to flip this over, put in the wing formers and the spar channel as the spar will traverse the wing right here and fold the upper surface of the wing over creating our leading edge here and here. Now I've turned over the wing halves so this is the left lower surface inner surface this is the right lower surface inner surface here's where the leading edge will go the eventual nose and this is the upper surface of the right and left wing respectively. Here's where the spar will rest. Uh, lately I've taken to removing not all of the paper from the upper inner surface of the wing but only four inches of it. By retaining some of the extra paper from the cambered portion back, this is some additional strength. It's a good mounting spot for your servo buried in the wing and it also provides paper on both sides of your eventual control surface. So the, the only part that really needs to have the paper removed is here, which will be the cambered part right there. So again, the paper is left on the inner face of the lower surface of the wing from here to here. The paper is removed from this point around the leading edge bend up along the camber to approximately this point, at which point the upper surface is virtually straight and the control surface is of course straight. So that will provide paper on this side and this side for a little additional rigidity here as well as for the upper surface of the wing here. So this paper, either the 4 inch strip or all of the paper your choice, is simply peeled off and will be ready to make the formers and the spar channel for the inside of the wing. Before you put in your wing formers and spar channel I recommend pre-bending your leading edge of the wing. This is a little difficult to do once you've installed the innards of your wing. My preferred method of doing this is to use two heavy pieces of plywood or OSB or particle board, one here, one beneath it, or one piece of that on top of a table, and then place your lower surface of your wing underneath the board or between the boards with only about a quarter inch of the paper extending. This is the part that will remain straight. And then simply lift up the leading edge of the wing and your upper surface and bend it over. Just get that started about 90 degrees of the bend and then once you've fatigued the foam inside a little bit so that it will accept more curvature you can remove it, bend that over and stick it beneath the boards like that. 
now that the lower surface has been pre-cut, cut off the upper surface of the wing to match. You can describe a line along parallel to this one, right here, extending it backwards, and cut that off. Now is a good time to go ahead and remove this half inch strip from the trailing edge of the lower face of your wing, like this, and then bevel down the inside face of the lower surface of your wing so that it will eventually accept the upper surface of the wing right here. If you have an extremely steady hand you can use a blade like this to cut right along there and bevel it. I myself don't have quite as much skills so I use a sanding block like this. Put this down along the edge of a piece of plywood or table and then sand that right down to a nice sharp bevel. To keep everything aligned and symmetrical, apply some removable tape like masking tape to the outer surface of your wing. Here's my left hand wing. and I'm going to get my right hand wing lined up as closely as I can. Like that. Now it's time to construct the spar channel here. You could just glue the spar in there, but that's not a very elegant solution. So I'm going to create a channel here to keep it aligned. And also, if you prefer to make your spar removable, you can actually place a hole through the leading edge of the wing, have the spar be pulled out, and your wing can be collapsible. This is distinct from the formers, which are parallel to the leading edge and will pass along this axis. The difference is in the usual arm and wing, those are also the spar channels. In this case, the formers will go here, the spar channel will go here. Notice that with this 32 inch arrow shaft, the spar goes right to the leading edge of the wing. It traverses the wings just about an inch forward of the trailing edge and then continues on to the leading edge of the wing on this side. For the spar channel you'll need to cut some one inch wide strips of foam board like this and I will give you the dimensions here however they're likely to vary a little bit depending on your wing construction. This piece is 10 inches long and goes to the end of the spar but it does not traverse this area because in this portion at the trailing edge of the wing you'll notice that that space is very narrow only large enough to accommodate the spar itself so the spar will rest right about here forward of that the space becomes wider and wider up here and so the spar channel can go right to the center transition of the wing and all the way out to the leading edge this piece is 13 inches in my case so the next step will be to glue down your spar channel formers here with hot glue ensuring to keep this perfectly aligned and once this step is done the wings will forever align with one another. The next step then will be of course to put these uh, formers in beneath the camber atop the spar channel. One and then another on top of that for a total of three foam board thicknesses thick. Now I will insert the formers for the wing. Now these will be placed first the lower one, then the middle, minus that spar channel, and then the upper, starting at one inch aft of the paper foam transition line. So this is one inch from here to here. What I've done is taken a two inch wide strip of foam board here, overlaid it at the proper location one inch aft of the paper transition line, and then beveled it up to the spar channel. You could in fact go ahead and put down these formers and then cut a groove through for the spar channel. Either way works fine. This is just the way I've chosen to do this. And so I will glue this down, glue this down, and then take a second intact piece of two inch foam board, glue that down on top of there, and then glue the third and final former here. Now I've glued in all three formers, one inch aft of the paper transition line. Not a lot of glue is required here. There really is no strength to be obtained by over gluing this since the forces are all compression against this. Do remove this paper off the upper former and use the side of a knife or some sort of blunt smooth surface to curve this down by depressing it and sliding it back and forth like this. The goal is to create a curvature of this upper former that more or less matches the upper surface of your wing so that when this is glued it will conform nicely all the way across the top. There is no need to glue in your spar. 
and if you do wish to have a removable spar this is a good time to create a hole in the leading edge of your wing or both of your wings from which to remove the spar. Now that the formers are installed, trimmed at the midline, ready to accept the upper surface to be folded over, you can go ahead and dismount the wings from one another and do the same for the formers on the opposite wing. Once the spar channel and formers are in place, you're ready to go ahead and close up the wing. And if you'll see my video on arm and wing, you'll see how to do that by first applying glue along the top former. The next step would be to apply glue right under the bevel here, under the trailing edge, and press down. Now that the wing is all glued up, viewed from the underside, you can cut off the excess foam board from the rear, leaving a two inch control surface, which will be refined later. And this is the tip of the wing, which we'll need to cut off to provide a cord which is parallel to the joint of the wing. So assuming you've used a nine inch overall cord, so that's seven inches from here to here, plus a two inch control surface, the dimension here will be four inches in. Now while this could have been pre-cut before folding up the wing, I always find out it doesn't turn out quite right. So I prefer to actually fold up the wing like this, use a straight edge, tape it to the surface, and use the longest, sharpest knife you've got just to incise all the way straight down perpendicular to the surface. That will cut the formers, the lower surface, and the upper surface all in one swipe. So you're almost finished with joining your wings with the 135 degree nose angle. Nicely matched up to here. Don't worry about what happens from here back because the control surfaces are going to be cut out there anyway. But here's what it looks like on the inside at the root and at the tips. You'll see you have a nice airfoil shape. Now just refeed your spar back into that channel following the uh, channel that you've created with this little section here. If you've omitted this, you'll have to peek up inside and see where the channel goes through the formers and get that lined up. And then just simply repeat that on the opposite wing. Now that you've confirmed the spar is a nice fit and the halves come together, now that the wings are constructed, it's time to create the elevons. Refer to the main arm and wing video for details on this, but in general, you will remove a strip of paper from the very trailing edge, about half an inch, peel the paper off, create a nice bevel, and we'll also bevel out the hinge for the control surface right down to the paper. Apply tape into the hinge. And then on the top surface, and then create a nice sharp trailing edge there. 